Welcome to MindShift, I'm Brandon. Today is a Sunday special, and this is a really unique video, kind of a tripling down that we're going to do. The last two videos that I've done had a lot of very different responses to it. I did one here, which is 20 common New Testament commands, not all from Jesus, but a lot from Jesus, that most Christians seem not to do. I followed it up with 20 more, and in this video, I covered some of the excuses that I got from believers about the first video, why they don't have to do these things, why it's more about love, how I'm taken out of context, how I'm too literal, things of this nature. And what it all boiled down to for me is that people don't really like Jesus very much. They don't like what he stands for. They don't like what he teaches. They think that it's not applicable to them. They think they don't have to do it. They think that they are exempt and they are more likely to follow someone like Trump. Thus today's video. Many of you have been sending me articles and polls and all kinds of things showing the pastors who still try to preach the gospel message are having trouble as much of their congregation is thinking that their teaching is too woke too liberal. Now, this is painting with a broad brush. Not all Christians love Trump. Not all Christians are Christian nationalists. But a vast majority of people who claim to be believers were also the same people that voted Trump in. And I understand having to choose between the lesser of two evils, and that's what these people thought they had to do. But there is a huge segment of this nation that claims to be Christian and idolizes Trump. They support him. They believe in what he says. They think that he is righteous and just. It's it's unbelievable. I'll share a few clips here to kind of set the stage. My hope is that the people of this nation will re-elect Jesus to be on the throne here again <laughs> in our country. Make America great again. God found a man. He represents the godly people of the United States of America. I thank you for President Trump. I put a hedge of protection around him. I secure his purpose. I secure his destiny. I secure his life, God. And I thank you that he will walk in a holy boldness and a wisdom, God, and that you will go before him. Jesus Christ, we invoke your name. Amen. Amen. I'm to the place right now. If you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. I don't care how mad that makes you. God will use him. And I don't know that he's going to even be aware of how God is going to use him. And most of all, Mr. President, we thank you for acknowledging that ultimately it is God who is the source of our unity as Americans. And I thank you for issuing this proclamation today. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of the greatest men. Why are you attacking the prophets, the, the, the intercessors, the Christians that are wanting to see Donald Trump reelected? Why are you attacking them? Call me a Trump worshiper all you want to. But I know what came from my Trump worship. The blessings of the Lord. When you put your hand to the anointing, the anointing will put its hand to you. I invite every one of you to help me elect the next president of the United States of America. Donald J. Shout Trump. I find it absolutely fantastic fascinating and hypocritical to see clearly the words of Jesus and what he values and commands, and then to disregard that so heavily as you vote and support someone like Trump, who for all intents and purposes could be the Antichrist. And I don't mean that as in the Antichrist from the Bible, I mean as in the opposite of Jesus. There is such little crossover between these two. I can't believe that this is the representative for Christians. Again, not all Christians. I understand this. What I'm going to be doing in today's video is comparing 20 we'll stick with that number, quotes from Trump, most of which happened either during the presidential debates or during his time as president. There are a couple exceptions there. And compare it with 20 things that Jesus said. Trump quote number one, I've got enough, much more than I'll ever need. I do it to do it. And Jesus says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. I call it truth hyperbole. Let your yes be yes and your no be be no. When someone hurts you, just go after them as viciously and as violently as you can. When somebody challenges you, fight back. Be brutal. Be tough. If someone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. I think I'm actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than anyone would understand. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves 
will be exalted. Get even with people. If they screw you, screw them back 10 times as hard. Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. The point is, you can never be too greedy. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. I play to people's fantasies. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I will build a great great wall on our southern border. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I've always won and I'm going to continue to win. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? It's tangible. It's solid. It's beautiful. It's artistic from my standpoint and I just love real estate. Sell your possessions and give them to the needy. By the way, I did think about doing a Trump voice for all of these and I decided against it. I also thought it would be really cool. I don't have these skills. Someone tell me how to do this. Like I've seen, I think on rationality rules, AI that you can get to speak and it moves its mouth along with the words. I would have loved to do Trump first Jesus and just let the two of them go back and forth, but I simply don't have the skill set. Maybe we'll make an updated version of this when someone tells me how to do that. 13. Trump Trump, I love getting even. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who abuse you. I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have a very good brain and I've said a lot of things. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I alone can fix it. They are blind guides, and if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. It's my opinion that to get to the top, you have to be ruthless. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. I know words. I have the best words. On the day of judgment, people will account for every careless word they speak. By your words, you will be condemned. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My primary consultant is myself, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And lastly, Trump says, the show is Trump and it is a sold out performance everywhere. And Jesus says, whoever will be great among you must be your servant. The starkness of these contradictions could not be stronger. I can hear all the wonderful excuses already. Well, Brandon, you know what? I mean, let's talk about Hillary. Let's talk about Biden. And yeah, we could absolutely do the same exercise with them, except there's just not a ton of Christians standing up saying, that's my girl, that's my guy. There's not an entire movement going on where those people are called prophets of God. We don't see them leading rallies as if they're an evangelist. Moreover, we don't see Christians calling these people Christian. The amount of Christians in this country that believe that Trump is the representative of God on earth, that he's leading God's chosen country into the future, that he is here to deliver us from the evil of the liberal democratic side, that he is here to make America great again on behalf of the creator of the universe is insane. The claim from too large of a portion of Christians in this country is that Trump is their guy. How and why would you rather listen to Trump than Jesus? I try to stay away from some of the sexual abuse things and some of the racist comments and things like this, but if we go outside of just kind of these fun quotes that really sum up who Trump is and what he believes and what he gets cheered for, the other thing that I've always found fascinating is the things Christians just won't talk about. Do you know how many preachers I've seen from the pulpit talk about Trump being the right leader and turn around and the next Sunday have a sermon on how we should respect women, what our community needs to be doing better when it comes to the poor or foreigners. Do you not see the double speak? What a wild thing. It's actually just humorous to me and I wanted to kind of have a lighter Sunday in comparison to some of the other things that have been going on, but I'm really excited to hear from you guys. See the examples you have, hear the defenses from the Christians, and let me just give the caveat, there's a ton of you Christians that know Trump is ridiculous, and I'm sure that many of you are voting for someone else in the Republican primaries if possible, but the sheer support that he has from the believers in this nation is worth addressing. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Tuesday, I'm doing a video in a response to Seth McDowell. We haven't talked about him yet. He has a clip on the role of faith in being healed. So I think that'll be our Tuesday video. Thursday, we'll be doing First Chronicles, and then who knows what we'll be doing for the weekend videos. So stay tuned for all of it. Thank you so much for being here, and until then, keep 
Thank you. I wanted to personally thank my top tier Iconoclast patrons, Sean Skaggs and Jason Rollins, and my atheist advocate patron, Jared Nichols, for their incredible generosity. Also, a big shout out to my secular scholar patrons, of which we have some new ones. All other patrons are listed in the description of each video. Please consider joining this great group if you enjoy these videos or believe in my mission. Thanks, and have a great day.